Hi, Erwan from Motion VFX. In this new lesson, we'll do a complete review on the three different clip types inside DaVinci Resolve. We will talk about compound clips, adjustment clips, and fusion clips. We will see the purpose of each element and learn when to use them and how they can help you with your workflow. First, let's start with the compound clip. The main goal of the compound clip is to regroup any elements inside your project. Audio, video clips, titles, and effects. It is very simple to create a compound clip as you just have to select the elements you want to regroup. Here, for example, I would like to group all the parts of the intro. So I will select the four elements. Then I will do a right click and select new compound clip. A pop-up window will appear to type the name of the compound clip. I will type intro. Automatically, my cop on clip will be added inside the media pool, so you can use it as a clip in other timelines, for example. If you need to apply some changes, do a right click and select Open in Timeline. So you will be able to go inside the cop on clip and do some changes. Like here, I will edit the title. So if I go back to the previous timeline, the new title will be updated. Be careful, as the changes will be applied to all the compound clips in your various timeline. For example, if I come back to the first timeline, the title will also have the modification. You can also break the compound clip at any time. Just do a right click and select Decompose in place. It will bring back all the various elements. Compound clips can be very useful when you have multiple layers for a composition and you want to add a transition with a previous shot. Here, for example, by default, I can't add the transition to the video clip and the title on the track 2. But if I create a compound clip, I will get one element and I will be able to add a transition on it. First, you need to create some handles, otherwise you won't have enough content to create the transition. So I will trim the beginning of the compound clip just a little bit. I will drag and drop the transition number 5 from the MTuber 3 pack. I will quickly edit the transitions and we are good. A second use of the compound clips is the fact that you can add the same transformation to multiple elements. Like here we create a compound clip with a video layer and the title. Then inside the inspector I will be able to reduce the global scale and position. But also you can add any effects on it, like here I will add additional footage effect from the MKBHD pack on my cop on clip. And inside the effects tab, I will be able to adjust all the parameters. By using the fusion overlay option of the viewer, I will be able to move the cop on clip directly inside the viewer. As the cop on clip is not a render element, you can add effects and modify any parameters. Here I will open it and add the CCTV effects from the Emery style pack on the video clip. And the effects can be seen with a global composition. And if I need to edit the title, select the title and modify the parameters you need. Like here, I will increase the size. One last detail concerning the cop on clip. On big projects with many video and audio footage, it could be very difficult to find the cop on clip inside the media pool. The tip is to create a smart pin that will regroup automatically all the compound clip from your project. To do so, do a right click on the smart bin area and select the option Add Smart Bin. A new pop up window will open. First, I will give a name for my smart bin, I will call it Compound Clips. Then, on the second drop down menu, I will select the clip type option and I will select on the last drop down menu Compound. Inside the media poll, you can see in real time what will be the result of the research. Then, you just have to click on the Create button and the Smart Bin will be added. We've seen that using FX with compound clips is very useful, but there is a better workflow with FX, and this one is using Adjustment Clips. You can find Adjustment Clip in the FX category. As it is a useful tool, I'm using it all the time. I've set it as favorites, so I can have access to it at any time, especially if I'm using FX in other categories. For people coming from After Effects, it is like an adjustment layer. So you just have to drag and drop it over the shots you want, like any title or video elements, and adjust the duration. By default, it won't do anything. But if you do any modification inside the inspector, it will affect all the elements below it. Like here, if I decrease the zoom parameter, it will affect the video and the title elements. And it is the same if you drag and drop an effect on it. Like here, I will add a graphical effect from the Emery style pack. 
If I move the title above the adjustment clip, you will see that the title is not affected anymore by the M restyle effect. But the best feature compared to the compound clip is the fact that you can trim the in and out point of the effect. You can even add some fade in, fade out, so it's very flexible. The only drawback today is the fact that you can't add any transitions on it. The second big advantage using the adjustment clip is the fact that it will preserve the animation in and out of the fusion effects as if you add a fusion effect directly to a clip, the clip won't manage the in and out animation. The in and out animations from our preset take the duration of the media file, not the clip of the timeline. Also, if you turn trim media into cop on clip, the timing will be set for the cop on clip duration, but the adjustment clip is definitely easier to set. If I move up the two titles and remove the effect on the clip, I will be able to insert one adjustment clip in between and add the effect on it. This time, the effect will act in a good way with the in and out animation. Of course, you can use adjustment clip over all your project to add a dedicated effect that will affect all your project, like letterbox, color grading, or like here with my M16mm preset. And of course, you will get access to all the parameters of the effect to customize it. For the last part of this tutorial, let's go further with the effects. For example, if I would like to create a more complex effect with a typographic clip, like the M title restyle preset here, if I select it and switch to the fusion page, we'll be able to access to all the parameters inside the inspector. So that's nice. But what is really cool is the fact that we can add many effects as we want inside the node view. For example, I would like to add some light rays. So I will click on it and the effects will insert automatically between the typography and the media out node. In the inspector, I will be able to customize the effect. And if we switch back to the edit page, we can see that the light rays are present inside the final edit. So this is very simple workflow with Fusion preset like this typography effect. Next, let's see if it is the same with a clip which has already an effect applied on it. If I select the clip and switch to the Fusion page, Fusion will see only the video clip and not the effect applied on it. To be able to access to the effect parameters inside the Fusion page, you will have to go to the Inspector, inside the Effects tab and click on the Fusion icon. Now we'll be able to see our video clip with the effect inside the node view. So for example, I could add a light rays node to the original effect. And if we switch back to the edit page, the effect will be present. Okay, that's nice. But how to manage inside the fusion page, a video clip and the title at the same time? I will select both and do a right click. This time I will select the new fusion clip option. So it will create a fusion clip and it looks like a compound clip. But if we switch to the Fusion page, inside the node view, I can see my two elements and the compositing structure with a merge node. So this time we can apply various effects on each element independently. Here I will add my light rays effect, but with different values. And if we switch back to the edit page, we'll get the final result. I can create Fusion Clip with more layers, like here, and inside the Fusion page, we'll get automatically the compositing project set for us. I can add some glow effect on the subscribe typography preset and get the result inside the edit page. One last tip concerning the Fusion clip. As you know, DaVinci Resolve accepts only pictures files for the drop zones. But our talented and amazing developers have found a great workaround to add video inside the drop zone. And this is possible with the Fusion clips. Inside some packs from Motion VFX, like here with MSH2, you will be able to create complex animations with video elements with a couple of clicks. In this example, I will use an incoming core preset with six drop zones. First, I've prepared all my clips with the same duration inside the timeline. I've got seven tracks, as the first one will be the background layer. I will select all the tracks and create a fusion clip. Then I will add my effect incoming core 7 on the fusion clip. Inside the inspector, I will be able to adjust the global size. But what is really neat is inside the drop zone controls as you will be able to control the background element. But the most important thing is the fact that you will be able to switch to the video mode for each drop zone, and it will link automatically to the video elements inside the fusion clip. 
That's a very cool use of the fusion clips and it is available on many presets from our packs. That's conclude this lesson on the various clip elements, compound, adjustment and fusion. I hope it will give you a nice overview of the various workflows by using them and I hope also that it will speed up your productivity inside DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.